rock church so i just thought why don't we do like little itty bitty like bible studies for you so that maybe you could just get a good word in your heart and um well i'll post some like questions that you can talk to your kids about maybe around the dinner table or have some bible time together and um, let's be the spiritual leads and spiritual heads of our home and so let's put jesus into the hearts of our kids um i know as a mom i um had family night the other night and i wanted to ask each kid you know like which one of you is having feelings are you do you have an anxiety are you feeling worried about anything and you know each one of my kids had a different response because everybody has their own perspective to life. Everybody experiences or feels things differently. I love that about God that he made us all uniquely our own. And so we were able to um, just kind of work through their feelings and um, I wanted to just have some time with them. So I asked the Holy Spirit, can you show me um, where and what to show the kids? And so he actually brought me to a scripture that Pastor Jim preached an incredible message on. And I was already gonna do this video, so I'm gonna do it anyways, but I want to encourage you, Rock Church, to, um, or anybody else that's listening, um, to go to rockchurch.com and um, or rock.church and you can go to the um, Wednesday night service on these verses but we're gonna just read this story really quick and then I'm gonna just give you just little um, questions that maybe you guys could talk over and just kind of point out some incredible things um, that God is doing and I just love the Lord because he's so faithful to us and he knows our worries he knows our fears he knows we're very human about all these things don't you love that about God that he just he just takes care of us where we're at. And so I'm actually going to get a different Bible because, you know, I'm a pastor. I got lots of them. But this is my new Spirit-Filled Life Bible from Pastor Mondo. And um, it's the New Living Translation, which I adore the New Living Translation because I'm kind of not like the girl that knows all the details of the old English and the way things work. So if you're looking for a good version of a Bible to go through with your kids, um, the New Living Translation is the best. So if you got your Bible, get it out to Mark 4, okay? And it's Mark 4, 35. And it says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Now, let me, let me give you some context. Here was Jesus. He was doing all of these miracles. He was teaching his disciples. He was putting into them all the things he wanted them to be and what he wanted them to learn and who they were and what and um, how they're aligned into the world and, and how their seeds that what we put in, it will grow. And so what are we putting into our lives? And there's so many incredible um, words from the Lord. Can you imagine just sitting at Jesus' feet and like every day getting more and more from him? How amazing was that? And so here they had just gone through so much. They had just been taught, filled up, equipped. And so Jesus says, well, let's go to the other side. And so they're crossing over this lake. You know, I think of it like Lake Tahoe, you know, it was smaller than Lake Tahoe. But the reality is, is that this lake that they were crossing, it was a freshwater lake and it was also a lake that was kind of down in caverns and so when the wind would get stuck in there it would actually cause waves and storms can you imagine like on a lake we think of that on the ocean but they get into this boat and they're crossing over jesus is sleeping at the stern or at the helm and he's sleeping on a pillow i love how the bible just put that like on a pillow and it so let's read about it it says as they came, he said, let's go to the other side. Verse 36. So they took Jesus to the boat. They started out leaving the crowds behind as though the other boats followed. So he wasn't alone. There was a whole group of them that were going and they were, they were caravanning across the lake. But soon a fierce storm came up. Let's pause there for a second. Does this coronavirus feel like a fierce storm? I mean, the whole world is shutting down. I just kept thinking to myself, how fast did this happen? All of a sudden, we're, we're told to be in our homes. And, and I even heard yesterday, we're not allowed to go to parks. Like, I live across the street from a park. You should see all the people in the park. And there are so many things that just suddenly you know, happen. And, and maybe you've been a victim of a tragedy. Somebody that you love died in a car accident. Somebody got cancer. You're fighting a good fight of faith right now. And so the storms will not stop. We live on this earth. This is a broken, fallen earth. And God knew that, but he knew what we needed for this. So let's keep going. So the storm rises up and it says, 
But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and they began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping, I love this, at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. I love that. Ooh. This disciple woke him up shouting, shouting at Jesus, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? I think it's a little comical that they were afraid of dying, but yet they had the one who actually gives life right in front of them. So my takeaway from just this part is, what are we doing Christians? When we get in fear and when we get overwhelmed by the concerns and the worries of the world, because we have Jesus living on the inside of us. His name is Holy Spirit. He lives, he dwells. He's waiting for us to commune with him. He's waiting for us to talk with him. He wants to lead us. He is the father of of love. He is the one that is our helper in our time of need. Isn't that good news? And Jesus is like listening to these people say, we're going to drown. And God is thinking, I just taught you all of these things. I just poured so much of the word into you and you're panicking about drowning yet I'm in the boat with you. So I love this. Jesus says, when Jesus woke up, Jesus was sleeping at the back and they were shouting, we're going to drown. Verse 39, when Jesus woke up, he rebuked and said to the waves, silence, be still. I love that he's the man of authority. You know, I'm a, I'm a woman. I like a good man. You know, somebody who just takes control and people are like, Pastor Dan's so nice. He is, but that guy, he's stubborn and he can just tell it like it is. And I love that about him. And so here was Jesus, like, just taking, taking the reins back and going, this is how this works. And I can just imagine their faces, right? Like put yourself in their positions. Like, oh, that was awkward. Like, yeah, duh. Like we were freaking out, but yet we had him in the boat. And so Jesus says, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped. Woo, I love that. Come on, coronavirus. Silence, be still. You got to go. You go back to hell where you came from. You will not touch our, our bodies. You will not touch our children. You will not touch our churches. Oh, the church of God is alive and strong. And it says, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped. And there a great calm. When your heart gets worried, when your kids seem like they're on panic, when you get that other bill in the mail and you don't know how you're going to pay it, when your job calls and says, hey, can you not come in today because we're just trying to make ends meet? and you go, oh, what are we gonna do? You just remember he silenced the storm and this is a storm and he's gonna take care of you, that he's gonna bring a calm and a peace to your heart. I love that. And then it says in verse 40, then he asked them, why are you afraid? I, I, I hear Jesus speaking that not in an irritated question mode or a um, annoyance like, oh, why are you afraid? But almost like a father would to a son or a mom to a kid who's afraid. Why are you afraid? I love that. You still have no faith? Like after everything I just taught you, after you just walked with me and saw miracles, you saw me work, you saw signs, miracles, and wonders, why are you still afraid? Church, let's remind ourselves today that God is in control, that we do not have to be afraid, that faith over fear always conquers. and. I love this. It says that the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked, who is this man? After they were just with him. After they were just taught by him. And then they asked each other, even the wind and the waves obey him. I wonder, and I question to myself, sometimes we get the word and we hear the things that God teaches us and he and maybe you get a prophetic word from somebody. Maybe you're in church and you're like, oh, I know that was for me. That was confirmation. And yet we still have that little doubt in our hearts. Let's get rid of the doubt today. Let's step into who Jesus is. Let's anchor our faith, our joy, our salvation, the goodness of God in who he is. So maybe what you could do right now is read the story to your family, okay? So I filled you up, taught you a little lesson, and maybe take a couple little notes, go back and get the notes, and, um, and sit down with your kids. Go over the story with them. Ask them if they have any fears. Are there things that maybe at times that they don't know, like, is God really going to come through in this? Like, what do they want to see God move and do in their lives as children? You know, um, I love these conversations because my kids, they, they just go, man. They just start going. And, um, and ask this question. 
If you knew that Jesus was sitting right next to you right now, what would you say to him? And guess what? He is. He lives within us. And so let's pray. And then lead your family in prayer. And maybe whatever the things that they talked about, you know, with you, they can actually pray. Assign them. Okay, then you're going to pray over this. You're going to pray over this. My kids were like, you know, I feel bad for the president. Like, everybody's going against him. And this poor guy, I mean, we're seeing the pressure you and dad are feeling. But the president, like, think about all the pressure he has. And I said, well, we need to pray for him. Let's pray for him. So one of my kids prayed for him. One um, prayed over the finances for the economics. It's amazing. Even children think about these things. And so we prayed over that. We prayed over the church. We prayed over our family. We prayed against sickness. I mean, it was a really great prayer time. Then after we got done praying, um, my child, one of my oldest children, they said, wow, I feel like so much better. I'm, I really am not worried anymore. I feel like really good. Like God's in control and he's going to be okay. And we're going to get through this mom. And I'm like, that's right. So I love you, Rock Church. I hope this helps you. Here's a little tidbit um, below. You can get, you can print out coloring pages about Peter, about Jesus, about John. Like we're going to have all this available for your children's ministry, but we're going to um, find a coloring page so that maybe if you have a really young child, they could color while you're teaching them this story. And then we're going to also send those questions. Okay. I love you. Bye.